Nicholas, the educator of the unwise and the unruly, called of Bell am I, pronounced this curse upon any if they dare neglect my enriching video podcasts, my pearls before swine. May Nurgle, the might amongst gods, whose contest is irresistible, who grants me victory in his great might, burn up his subjects like a slender reed sock, cut off his limbs with his mighty weapons and shatter him as an earthen image. May Nintu, the sublime mistress of the lands, the fruitful mother, deny him a son, vouchsafe him no name, give him no successor among men. May Nin Karak, the daughter of Anu, who adjudges grace to me, cause to come upon his members in Iker, high fever, severe wounds that cannot be healed, whose nature the physician does not understand, which cannot be treated with dressings, which, like the bite of death, cannot be removed until they have sapped away his life. Albatross. Albatross. <laughs> All right. and, uh, That's the, and the Code of Mikurabi. Yes, yes, that's the curse with which we open uh, this, oh. our third episode of Hubris on Toast. We're, we're, off, um, to a, we're off to a rip-roaring start, and we um, may have even peaked early. Possibly. So yes, I am uh, Nicolas O'Shenanigans, and you are? Kurabi. Oh, Kurabi. Kurabi? It's a vegetable. Um, yeah. I did actually look up how to write my name in cuneiform and was going to take the time to do it because you can, it's it's quite a bit like Japanese in that way you can break the syllables down and there is a, a handy little, um, you know, cheat guide in the back of yes, right there. Mm. Um, and I could pretty much get uh, a Niku Si Hanu, which was as close <laughs> as I could come to my name, which is not that far off what it comes out when you do it into katakana. Um, did what you go I, to the trouble? Did you, did you build a wedge out of chucks? Yes, I did. I went down to a. Re I got yeah. I got a reed and and cut a stylus. Right. And got some river clay. Uh, but yeah, no, I haven't done it yet. But I think I might just for the fun of. It made me think about trying to transliterate my name into all the different forms of writing that I could find. Um, it's all about you, isn't it? Nick? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Linear B. <laughs> you know the whole, the whole thing. Um. But yes, anyway, we're still we're we're still stuck between those rivers. Yeah, uh, we're still getting out. Um Yeah, episode three, and we've not escaped Babylon. And it seems as well we're still I mean it's I don't know about you, we'll talk about this, but there's a, a, I still feel as if I'm kind of um treading on Yes, at sea. On, yeah, it's a long, I'm long, slowly long getting piece of history. Yeah, yeah, but but more than that, because you mentioned this off air before we started chatting, is let's say you'll be reading like one of these books we, we'll be reading here, and then mm -hmm. there'll be a reference, let's say, all of a sudden to her. But of course, uh, they, these you will find connections with the legend of Bingongosh and the story of, yeah. and you're like, what? what's this now? What's this mm -hmm. really specific thing that you're throwing out? that I've not heard of. Because on the one hand, again, we mentioned this before, on the one hand, you, you feel as if everything's very, very, very piecemeal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then all of a sudden, there's all, the, there's this rich kind of uh, myth. And, you, and I still qu can't quite reconcile, how do we know that? Because I've just been done reading yeah. about how we know basically fuck all. Yes, and, and, but somehow you've uh, extrapolated this from it, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that's not true or right, but I'm I still don't quite have the straight the through line yeah. of how we know what apparently we know. D are you getting that? Yeah, well? yeah, and, and so I mean, I, this came up when we were talking about like I really enjoyed reading the Epic of Gilgamesh and <laughs> and reading multiple versions of it and getting a sense of the scope of the story and. And but then getting the sense of a much bigger surrounding bunch of myths and gods that this is just one of and maybe the best preserved. And then we read the book about Ishtar in our last episode, and I enjoyed that again. Hmm. But but I still feel like there's there's constantly references in the historical record to gods and to their relationships and stuff. And I'm trying to well, are those myths? Do we still have them, or do we just have the references to them in in yeah? fragmented works but i i just i want to get a bigger sense of in the way that we have a very clear sense in greek mythology 
of the stages of you know right through right. and you know there's, right. there's a lot of that but do we have as much for well that's what uh, i mean so so with the with the greek myths for example is yeah you can you can sit down and you can read some books or you can even put it yourself together really you, you know um yeah, with with wikipedia as a big as a kind of beginner yeah. point you can kind of you read enough and you feel as if it's stacking up into a kind of recognizable you don't remember all the details obviously yeah. but you still you got a sense of it whereas i feel uh, how many books have we read now like <laughs> yeah uh, quite a few and i'm I, I yeah i still don't really have a flavor of who um the Akkadians or the Sumerians or or anyone Babylonians was yeah. they're still very very um which would be fine but like you said on the other hand they there does seem to be I, I don't know it's it's becoming less and less clear to me and that's the opposite of what I wanted I wanted for it to become more into focus yes I, I honestly think that is to do with uh, the amount of history we're talking about. I don't think that that when you're talking about other cultures, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but when you're talking about, you know, Greek culture, you're not necessarily, unless, I mean, okay, like specifically historical Greek culture, you're not talking about thousands and thousands of right. years in the same way, right? right? It just seems like there is this um, epic scope to how long Yes, Mesopotamia and Babylon and that area was the center of civilization on Earth. Yes, I suppose if it is condensed, then it's very rich. But then if you stretch it out across the time span, then then it gets spotty, right? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so, some of the books we read last time they they did start to become a little bit like a, just an endless list of kings yeah. following kings following, and then battles and wars, and this these people took over. But some but of the richness of the story gets sticky, lost it? in the fact, like in that kind of that, yeah. Yeah, the stickiness isn't there for whatever reason. So at a certain yeah. point, I, I don't know, I'm guessing we might have one more Mesopotamian episode in us maybe, and then maybe we may have to shrug and reluctantly right. move on. Head um, up to Egypt or somewhere nearby. Yeah, well, I, I just feel as if over the course of these books now, I, I, there's a, I, not that I'm, I, I don't mind reading them at all. It, there's always something illuminating. Um, but I do feel as if we're circling around some of the same things again and again, and we're not really getting much further on, right? So I'm wondering, will, if it's, it, yes, where, how okay. stubborn we should be. No, God <laughs> right. damn it, we're gonna read another fifty books. <laughs> But because, I will no, say, we've got a lot to get through. Because, oh, yeah, sorry, before you continue, just in case oh, anyone doesn't know, and this is their first episode, yeah, uh, this is Hubris on Toast, and we are mm -hmm. basically covering um, everything ever. So, yes, yes, uh, the entire literary canon of all nations and, um, and sciences and and philosophy and yeah, uh, yeah. everything. It's all, all of it. yeah. piece of piss. Yep, it'll yeah. be two brains in jars about a hundred years from now having these uh, podcasts. Um, and, and thank God, uh, you know, to cover such a... T I mean, now there's been great um, scribes and geniuses mm -hmm. before, but, but you know... <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely two, two laymen uh, who mostly yeah. watch trashy films and read That's comic what books. what you need, right? It's, it's absolutely the people you want. I yeah. feel as if this is just one level up from if they did uh, a Beavis and Butthead where they watch the History Channel. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps. <laughs> um, but uh, I was going to say the one thing that, so because we're, we we remain in the area and in the kind of, in, in chunks of the same time period, we will get some of the same, we'll get another, we'll get another lens on Mesopotamia when we talk about Egypt. We'll get another yes. lens yes, on it when we talk about you know uh the history of like of, of the hebrew people right so mm. we're going to get these kind of angles and it that starts to show up even in this one of the book about the kind of uh the genesis story right. of the uh, the ark right we right. Def we definitely see the impact of you know babylonian mesopotamian uh culture and history in the bible right so i think it's right so i, I do think we'll, we'll we'll start to put a picture together Maybe also even by moving out of Mesopotamia, I think we'll still. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, that's the whole uh, the idea of the project as a whole, really, is that it's kind of things start making 
a little bit of sense. So by the time we are 99 years old, we mm-hmm. just about be starting to figure it out before be, and then, yes. we collapse <laughs> into the grave. Yeah. Um, um, exactly. So, um, so we decided to go. So we got kind of three books. We usually go yeah. uh, three books or, or something like that. But in the case of, so there was three points I wanted to hit for this one. Uh, one was Hammurabi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I also wanted to talk about, I wanted a bit more about cuneiform. Yep. And also uh, wanted to go further into the pre Noah flood mm-hmm. myth, right? Yeah. So unfortunately, the one way we, we've kind of fallen down a bit on here is Hammurabi, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, I had two or three potential books all about Hammurabi year marked to read. And then when it actually got time to ordering them, holy fuck, these are expensive yep. um, university press. Yeah. I mean, not astronomically expensive. I, I suppose I could have shelled out. Um, but but we didn't. We decided not to. So instead, we kind of just, I assume for both of us, tried to plow through the, the yeah, the, the so you can find a, a several bog standard zero or one dollar kind of Kindle. Mm-hmm. I think I got the Len, uh, Leonard something or other yes. uh, translation. And it's just Pretty much just the facts, ma'am. Yep. There's no, because yep. what I wanted was one of these books where uh, there was more context who Hammurabi was and mm-hmm. the text. The actual laws would have been more annotated, and and that would have been a great episode. But you're not getting that. Instead, no. No. you're getting two folks um, struggling along with uh, <laughs> the world's first really uh, codified, you know. Yes set of laws but i will say i actually i i took the time earlier today to just watch like four seven minute youtube videos okay uh, on on hammurabi um you know uh <laughs> animated condensed so it really that that beavis and butthead approach to like well but i guess i don't have the help? time I, it kind it kind of did a little bit it just gave me a little bit of a more of a, a biographical sense of um you know that he was like he was 18 when he came to power mm-hmm. um and that in his initial years, as many uh, apparently Mesopotamian kings did, he forgave everyone their debts, uh, which was a, a real, you know, uh, bro thing to do for people and tended to make you pretty popular. Uh, so he wiped the slate clean. Um, he then starts to get into squabbles with neighboring cities because really it's a, it's a series of city states right at this point. Yes, yes. Um, and he ends up kind of teaming up with certain ones and uh, he then invades uh, the areas to the south of um his city and uh then he ends up basically in a very short space of time taking over this huge area uh of right. babylon um, yeah i mean it's funny isn't it because we because of the code which we'll get to i i yeah i think we do tend to think of him uh, yeah as a, a, a yeah almost like a, a legal fit like like the iron side of his day or something <laughs> but the <laughs> Right, he was a proper matlock, iron fisted Uh, ruler, right? Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and so he he then basically, but he does, he does do this, he makes this decision to codify, you know, and so it it does seem from the from reading and and from watching, it wasn't like these laws got pulled out of the air, many of them had been existing, you know, he just kind of pulled it all together into this one document. And that document itself is amazing, right? Because it's this massive black obelisk. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's um, it's in basalt. Um, yes. You say steely? Is that the correct? Steely, word? I think is yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, how it's steely. pronounced. Yeah. A beautiful object. Uh, yeah, and it's got a carving at the top uh, of him approaching one of the gods. Um, Shamash. Yes, yeah, Shamash, and then and then yeah, it's got this kind of story piece carved at the beginning, all the laws, and then it ends with that curse that I just read part of. Right. No, no, it's a it's a beautiful object uh, which you can see in the Louvre, right? I believe is where it yes. is housed now. Um, it's in. Uh, we'll get more to Cuneiform a bit more in it, but it's it's in 
Akkadian, right? It's an Akkadian yeah. and uh, somewhere between 1755 to 1750 uh, BCE, right? Mm -hmm. is, is, is when it was. But like you said, it was built upon, there were, you know, laws before mm -hmm. that, but maybe they were not necessarily, yes, codified and, and written down and, and you know, made, I suppose made um, official in a way and it's interesting because as you're because the thing is if you're re as you're reading through it your eyes do glaze over a bit because it yeah. is a man may not you know beat his donkey on a tuesday if his neighbor mm -hmm. uh, you know is has trumpet practice on a wednesday or you know and and, yes. and some of them are so specific they you know it's it's where legal precedence begins right yes like, yes what you understand like when you're watching an episode of law and order or something yeah. And in the, you know, behind uh, Sam Watterson or something, there's like uh, pay, um, shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves. You you realise, yeah. oh, that's why, because that's yeah. how this all begins. It's all on what one thing happens and 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 someone's like, oh, fuck, we better address that. Make now. A law. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. And and I like that you brought in the if, because they basically their laws are entirely made up of if then statements. If right. this happens then yeah. this must happen um yeah and it's uh, yeah and it, but at the same time some of them then get picked up in the bible rather famously right uh oh if, yeah um, the um, eye for an eye tooth for a tooth eye, yeah 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 bone for bone it's all it's all very much that retribution a retro retributive that's the word right uh, yeah pretty much retro retributionary anyway um yeah those laws um i miss so the days when we used to trade bones <laughs> <laughs> round the back of the bike shed <laughs> um yeah yeah so no it's and but yeah it, it's it, it's it is it is almost hilarious how specific they start to get um but i guess in every yes. case a law is made and that law turns out to be too general and they're like well okay well but yeah but what because there's there is this attempt constantly to to make things fair you know, right. it may not look like by our standards in certain cases we're like, oh, yeah. So obviously slaves had very few rights compared to, you know, um, non-slaves. Women seem to have fewer rights than men. But but mm. but there still is this kind of attempt to, like, make things in some way equitable. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's why you've got all these little... fair in the day, right? It would have been fair. Yes. In the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 also it is actually quite a, it, it doesn't take you long to read it at all. But I would still recommend if if you kind of seriously are interested in it, I would recommend maybe reading it in like five or ten minute segments because yes, if you try and read it all in one go, it's just there's there's, there's almost no because you won't remember any you're of gonna, it. You're, you're yeah, you're for it. sure. And it's not, but it is it is if you take it in five minutes, it's kind of interesting because mm -hmm. bits do jump out and you think oh that's you know i wonder how that came about like what happened yes. that's a law uh you know yes you go like what was the what was the precedent because you know in every law there's a story right right they, they wouldn't have made the law if somebody hadn't done that thing yes and, yeah. you know what i mean and so yes every time you, so some of them are quite quite amusing and there's a lot actually there's a lot of it that's around things like fairness of things that would be now we'd now call acts of god and I, maybe they were called acts of God then, like if right. your cow is struck by lightning, yeah. uh, but you're renting it out to somebody else, you know, like, yeah, you are not to be held responsible for whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of that. And, yeah. And also a lot of just um, kind of um, atonement as mm -hmm. much as, as justice. Right. Like, yeah, well, if you're responsible for this man's cow dying, you have to also kill one of your Cows. Yes. Or what's interesting, already seeping in, is the idea of, um, of um, financial renewal. Oh, yeah. Right. Like. Oh yeah, yeah. A few things which are like, yes, you must do this unless you you uh, you hand him a fiver and then yeah. good to go. You know. Yeah. In fact, I would say that that's this is the first place we ever see this kind of idea of like. Um, don't do the crime if you can't pay the fine because there's a few that are like uh they have very specific you know you must pay back 40 fold what what you know um and if you don't have any money it's the death penalty it's so basically right. if you're a rich man 
you can do this crime and you might get away with it and you might not, but you can yeah. you can pay your way out. If you're a poor man, don't try this. So there we um, go. It's injustice from the very beginning. Uh, oh, but yeah. it's, it's it's also kind of interesting to me at at what point um did did they feel comfortable enough? Because you can imagine. You know they start writing these, and because a lot of things are, are clearly reference the one in front of them, so they'll be yeah. like, "Yes, this is definitely this happened. This will be that," and then the next one will be, "Unless, uh, you know." So mm -hmm. it really, oh, for fuck's sake, they had to keep going back. And, yeah. and I'm wondering at what, why, why did they suddenly feel comfortable enough? You know, this isn't going to change much anymore. This, this will do. Right, um, yeah, yeah. Because they didn't I, have. Because we're still doing it, right? Like now, uh, nowadays, it, it you know things that were you know for decades and decades and decades we pretty much had a good handle on. But then, in the domain of let's say um, social media, mm -hmm. suddenly we have to rethink. Yes. Uh, you know things that we thought were pretty cut and dry before in terms of things like free speech and and stuff yep. like that. But now in a different arena, you're like, oh, hang on, this doesn't quite work the same way. So we have to, mm -hmm. so we have to get another basalt steely out the oven. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I would imagine that the reason was that Hammurabi said, "I would like my name attached to this." Yes, yeah, so a legacy. Make this happen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely. I mean, like, and the entire last chunk of it is basically let any man who attempts to efface my name from this and put his name on or to change any of these laws. Uh, right. Yeah. All that. It's kind, of like, it's kind of like a couple of dicks on YouTube deciding that, you know, history isn't worth anything unless we've thrown our hat in the ring. Exactly. And talked about yeah. it, even though we don't understand what we're talking about. What a couple Damn, of souls they would be, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't want to meet them. No, no. Um, and then he he then he kicks off and dies relatively young at sixty. Um, right. And, Although sixty would have been pretty. Good at the time, days. yes. Yeah. But apparently, yeah. people did. Uh, you know, not, not counting the stories of people living thousands of years to show up. Um, <laughs> yes. But, I don't uh, know if I believe those ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But the uh, but the kings apparently the kings some of them did live you know into their nineties so you know. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know what else there is to say about how no, that's the thing. I mean, left us. I mean, what is interesting to me is that that it does, and I was so I was watching a video where actually uh, some law professor was talking about how it really does actually cover most of the big areas. Of to someone who actually knows what they were talking about. I did. I did. Yeah, it was fascinating. Um, and so Not you know, that. because family law takes up a big chunk. Of yes. It, right. Like like divorce law. Um, you know. Uh, which property goes to which kids, all that stuff, you know. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and again, that's one where it really breaks down into if in this situation or this, or if you've taken a concubine, or if your wife right. is a Vesper virgin and hasn't given you kids, then you may have sex with another right. girl. To have, you know, like it's very um, yes. specific. Unless people, your unless. son is a twat. <laughs> exactly. In yeah. which case, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you know you've got obviously lots of stuff around property law. You've got yeah, I mean it like it, it really does. Uh, you know most uh, 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 slander and libel like it's it's got most of the the stuff that we still have. Right. I don't know how we, I don't know if we've added as much to it as you might think. Well, I, I suppose thing. if you're talking like core stuff. Yeah, the oh, bigger it's, it's areas. All, of law. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, people are always going to have the same basic, you know. Sex, death, and taxes, and mm -hmm. all that, right? Um, maybe it's 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 worth bringing back just a point that I think came up maybe in the very first episode, or um, but I it kind of blows my mind to a degree the extent to which how much culture and how much of of how things still are in the world, like the very the creation of cities at all, right? Mm -hmm. The the division of time into sixty seconds, sixty minutes. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, into 12 months of the year. Um, how much of this stuff comes out of Mesopotamia? And I think I always had the impression as a child that most of Western culture comes out of Greece, comes out of right. Rome, and maybe comes out of Egypt. And the fact that it almost comes, all seems to come out of Iraq, I, I'm still kind of blown away that that was 
I, I discovered that at the age of 47. Um, right. Maybe I'm just dense. Maybe I just, maybe I was sick the week that we covered ancient Mesopotamia <laughs> in school or something, but I really right. am continually amazed by the extent to which so much of, of the cultural underpinnings of how we still do things seem to come out of the space well, between the two rivers. One of the reasons for that as well is, it, you know, for the for the past few decades, um, Iraq hasn't been a a particularly tourist friendly part of the world. So, so for instance, you can go, you know, you can go to Greece and you can go yeah. to Rome and you can see to Egypt and you can see the things with your own eyes. And then, and then that kind of, you know, that that kind of, even if you had the interest already, it boosts the interest. Or if you didn't have yes. it, it kickstarts the interest. And then, but you know, um, Iraq hasn't really been uh, on the cards as a holiday destination, and I think that probably does make a huge difference. Right. Um. Yeah, because it. Yeah, because it. I know that's a very specific travel tourist thing but but that kind of you know that that kind of you don't you're not quite sure how that relates to to other things and then mm -hmm. that relates to this and that's really you know it kind of it so yes, it's yeah because it's a bit off limits in a way mm -hmm. so yeah i'm sure that has something yeah in fact and, actually... and pre that the thing is pre i mean there's a very small window of time from when we learned about this in the first place and removed all our clothes and excitement. Yes, yes, thanks. George. And then that part of the world, be, I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's and, and, and travel being, being, you know, freely available to all. I mean, what, how small is the window of time for, you know, um, Iraq tourism in the 20th and 21st century, right? It's, yes, yeah, yeah. It's slender. And poor, and even poor George. Before you know those issues, I, what he shot himself to death. Poor George Smith. George Smith. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, over uh, there in uh, in Iraq. Let's let's move on then. So so okay. I, I I will say I am again this that's what this project's all about. But I'm glad, even though I don't have a whole shitload of to say about it, I certainly don't have anything that no one else has ever said. But I'm glad this focused me enough to actually sit down and actually read the Code of Hammurabi, because mm. you know I do I I it just it becomes something slightly more substantive, right? Rather than I uh, Code of Code, of, you sit down, ah okay, got it, Code of mm -hmm. Hammurabi, hmm, interesting. And one day when one of those university press books becomes affordable, or I find it mm -hmm. on a remainder table, or or something like that. I would be happy to read yes. more about uh, Hammurabi. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, all right. I think mine has a different. Mine has a different cover. Oh yeah. But same book. I suspect same authors, right? Yes, uh, Irving Finkel and uh, Jonathan Taylor. We'll be coming back to Finkel again. Have you seen photographs of that guy? He's amazing looking. He looks like a ghost pirate. Oh, really? uh, I rec recommend, oh. yeah. He looks like Alan Moore's granddad. Like, just massive oh, white okay. beard and shaggy, huge. He's a huge man. Did you manage to find, because I was, the thing I didn't get around to doing, I was thinking of when we get to our second book of his, there's a, there's a film, right? There's a documentary. Did you see that? The, no, no. Because that's the books kind of centered around that they made a documentary, right? Okay, yeah, no, no, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So I don't know if that's on YouTube, but uh, I'll see if I can okay. find yeah, it. I'll, yeah, I'd be interested for sure. Um. So, yeah, so, so can you follow? So, yeah, this is another book, actually, Um. that even though, because, you know, you pick up almost anything like Gilgamesh or, or, or the Ishtar book or almost anything about any... Um, topic of ancient Mesopotamian culture, and there'll be at least a chapter on cuneiform. Yes. So I've read quite a lot about cuneiform yes. over the past year yep. or so. Um, so I don't know if I really needed another book all about cuneiform. Um, however, this is quite a neat little book. Uh, I agree. Taking the the beautiful yeah. photog 
photographs and illustrations. I mean, this is quite a nice item to have in your library, I think. I agree. And, and it's just the, the, the absolute alien quality yeah. of, like, of cuneiform. Like, it looks like something H.R. Giger designed, you know? Right, um, right. Like, it's fascinating. Uh, just to look at it as an as a almost like an art object, um, and, and they're really well photographed as well, right? Like they've they haven't just yes. pointed a camera at a glass case in a museum. No, no, no. They've, they've got right in, so you can see yeah, the shadow. I mean, yeah. Apparently, shadow and light was very key to being able to read them, right? I mean, so look you, at that. You That's just such a beautiful object. Just to come across yeah. that, and well, the other thing that struck oddly enough, as much as I've read about cuneiform tablets thus far as well. I don't think it was until I read this book that, like, it jumped out at me. Oh, they're, by and large, small. Like, yes. portable. Like, yeah. Yes. yeah, I didn't quite get that before. For some reason, I was thinking of, you know, the monolith from 2001. Well, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, the, the, the Code of Hammurabi, basically. Yeah, that's right. pretty big. Yeah, you're not carrying that around in your pocket. <laughs> pocket, no. Uh, yeah, is that the code of Hammurabi in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see me? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, um, so 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 just, I mean, because this again, this you you'll read this in like an hour or something, mm -hmm. and it, it is a fascinating read. Um, just even if you read, it's nice to have it all in one place. But combined with these photos, um, I, I don't know, it's like a. A for some reason, I'm inordinately pleased. I agree. This I, I really like it. In fact, I marked mine up quite a bit. Um, yeah, even though too, it's quite, quite slim and there's not that much, you know, I mean, compared to some of what we've read, we've much we've read much longer works about this time period and about this, even about this kind of writing. Hmm. But this is just, it's, it's really well done. It's condensed. It's breezy. It's yeah. fun to read. There's lots of interesting facts. I did keep wondering, though, they kept referring to fart jokes appearing in cuneiform, and then they never told me what the fart joke was. <laughs> and I, I uh, feel like there's a bit of a tease. Again, again, you wonder, how do you know this? Like, how did you... Because that's the other thing that, that, that jumps out at this as well, from, from this, is, like, just how um, fucking complicated... I mean... To get your head around how they even f started to get their head around, yes, sorting out number one, like, is this even a a, a letter a form of writing, or, or is it just a scratch on a mm -hmm. stone? And then, is it in Sumerian or is it Arcadian? And mm -hmm. which which of the multiple things that this word means is this one? Mm -hmm. And which d is this? Is it this d or is it that d? Or yeah. it actually seemed it almost seemed um, to make you know studying Japanese seem simple by comparison. Agree, and I but I do think that Japanese is is maybe the very best um, comparison, right? In that in that you know this begins right like kind of hieroglyphics almost right as a series of images which or you know the symbols that represent the whole word like the noun or whatever right right and then slowly over time those those larger like chinese characters you know the their version of them get broken up into syllabic pieces right which not, now you can write you know uh sound right using the yeah. same in the same way that you know katakana, japanese katakana, the same thing katakana, with the chinese yeah, yeah. yeah yeah going to hiragana and katakana and then the whole question of like Japanese is now, you know, you really need to be functionally literate. You know, it, you know, you need to be able to read katakana, hiragana, and you also need to be able to read romanji, because randomly in Japanese you'll throw actual, you know, uh, words spelled out, which may or may not be English, right? They may be, uh, right. they may be German and French and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. And then there's the furigana, right? The you know, above the, which, you know, that's how this one is read. But at this idea, I don't, and you know, the way people will sometimes show on their hand with a finger, like, oh, no, it's this, it's this kanji. Right. When right. I say that right. sound. Um, it, there's a lot of that going on in cuneiform, it sounded like. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I'm not, necessarily if 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 this is gonna i i don't know if i really l learned anything that i didn't know 
before, but having it all in one place, like like I know where to go now, if I mm -hmm. want to pull out a particular. Hang on now, what was that thing about cuneiform? Aha! I will go to my cuneiform book. Like this is yes. my auto cuneiform book, uh, which now that I say that will gather dust probably. <laughs> <laughs> But it's still, it's, it's, I, I, and uh, it's by the, it's from the British Museum. It is mm -hmm. the imprimatur of the, I, I, I don't have much to say about it other than if you want a cuneiform book, I think yeah, this, this is the one. This is the one. I, I it's agree. A, it's affordable. It's fun to read. It's beautiful artifact to look at. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, do you have mm -hmm. much no, not, more not, to say about it? Not really, no. I'm just flipping through to see what. Uh, I mean, I, it you know, I, it, some of these things will come up again when we talk about the other book, anyway. Just, to, yes, just yes. the whole, um, the whole scribal culture is kind of fascinating, and the fact that this book shows some examples where ink was used and written over the top of a clay tablet later on, right. um, or even at the time, so that there was apparently they, you know, it's believed that there was um right you know they also going to talk about how you know when we may have talked about this before that uh, a fire in the library is a positive thing um in in ancient mesopotamia uh you know as opposed to the library of alexandria right where all of this work is lost right um, when you when you fire a clay tablet it's you make it. it longer lasting yeah yeah um i also and quite so, like these beautiful um Luxury ivory writing boards. That yes, I quite like those as well. I, and they I would have like had wax, it. right? They would have been like a wax tablet. Yeah, I might see if I can get some of these from Amazon. Um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> from now on, <laughs> pen and paper is not good enough. No, 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 no yes. ivory writing boards are buzzled steely. Yes, that's the way to communicate. Slows the process uh, down a bit, but god damn, does it look. <laughs> Well, actually, the one thing I will say, oddly enough, even though, yes, they do look very much like something, you know, that um, Eric von Daniken would uh, yes. say was written in Jupiter or something. And then mm -hmm. um, over time, they are slowly starting to become not legible. I can't read them, obviously, but they yes. are starting to look to me a bit more like, like, I, like, like if I would have seen that. Um, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, I would have assumed I don't know, like it's art, it's patterning of some kind. Yeah, like yeah, or 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 it's uh, you know, quint an an elephant squashed a <laughs> right. a mouse uh through some yeah a, some reeds on a waterbed. Mm -hmm. It made right. It, this is what's uh, left. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. but now I'm. It's interesting that you start to you you see it as language, right? Rather than yeah, like you said, mm -hmm. decorative. It's actually information. I've started to actually see it in that way. Yeah. Now, which I wouldn't have No, no, yeah. Before. It's like a little flip that goes yeah, on in your yeah, brain. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those it's one of those mental um um Rubicons, you know. Mm -hmm. Fascinated too to see that he mentions at one point that there was movable type, potentially yes. two thousand years, two thousand years before Gutenberg. Yeah, that they had. Yeah, that's wild. Fuck you, Gutenberg. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. That police got those police academy films were shit. Um, I was gonna say, I think the one thing that that does, you know, I, I always feel teased by this. Just like there's that, you know, reference not just in this book, but in the other book as well by uh, Finkel about this fart joke that appears somewhere in a cuneiform tablet um like th little things like this like some texts were valued as the work of scholars from bygone days others seemed to be written by the gods themselves one text was even said to have been dictated by a horse mm. could i have an example oh, could we yes. translate some of that please so i yes I'm very interested um, yeah got any sugar cubes <laughs> exactly um, yeah so you know there's, there's just these little these little fascinating uh Bits kind of scattered throughout that just you know you're hung like me <laughs> exactly um 
All right. Yeah, I don't know if we have much more to say about. No, this, no, no, no. I, like I said, not every. I would definitely recommend this. Yes, me too. Um, not not at, not every hubris on toast has to be a two hour. Uh, no, no <laughs> extravaganza. Strong. Yeah. So let us move on to. Yes. The, the arc. arc before Noah decoding the story of the flood. Our mate Irving Finkel again, mm -hmm. and uh, after having read these two books as well. I quite like Irving Finkel. <laughs> yeah. I, I he like seems a, a slightly irascible gent. I like the cut of his jib. I have to mm. say, he's um, yes, he's quite um, yeah. I just like his very no nonsense kind of. Wait till you see what he looks like too, because that'll only add. Okay, I, he looks like he's about to go hunt a whale. Right, um, right. He's, yeah, um, but. Uh, but yeah, this you know it's funny. This this book's interesting because it's it's got some nice little autobio moments in it. You know, mm. oh, I love like hearing it, about him, how he got into the, becoming the an Egyptologist. Yeah, yeah, because the, because the Egyptology teacher died of a heart attack on day one of the course or whatever, and then they were all like, "Oh, what are we going to do with these guys?" And then he got shunted over to, oh, go and help out with the the that you know madman who does cuneiform. Um, what I like as well in this already kind of rarefied atmosphere, he has like the sternest teacher who like <laughs> yes. uh, doesn't allow for any shortcuts. Or, no, you know, no, you have to know how to read this in Sumerian and Akkadian. No excuses, or you have to yeah do a hundred by next and Tuesday. Result steely, or yeah, it's kind <laughs> of like me, Nick. Read these <laughs> four five hundred page books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that, that but was, you love that was, it. Oh yeah. Who doesn't? Um, and then, uh, and then coming into possession of this specific tablet, right? I mean, this book is really built around this one tablet, which mm. adds a certain amount to the, the story of the... I'm getting all excited. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> go George, go. Um, <laughs> that so, is yeah. still an extraordinary story, and I like in this book. It's really the the they he explains it properly. Mm, yes, like, it's, it's not, not just sure. he actually he got so excited. Yeah, yeah. George Smith got so excited when discovering. But the what I mean is, in the context, I don't know if it's just because Irving Finkel. Well, he's a good writer, but also he 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 has you know he can relate to it. Yeah, I actually, I can actually understand why George Smith like it. Doesn't sound so crazy to me. <laughs> Reading it right. this time, I was like, "Yeah, George, <laughs> I, you know. take it off, man." Yeah. Um, Woo! Yes, and if you don't know what we're talking about, I, we might have brought this up before the very first episode. But upon discovering this ancient clay tablet and starting to decipher it, George Smith. Uh, okay. This is the 1890s, right? I believe. This is 1872. Um, 1870. Sorry, yeah. Um, discovers this uh, version of the story of of basically Noah and the Ark from the Bible. But written in similarly um, before, right? Yeah, in um, I can't remember if it was his was the Sum the Sumerian because there's there's also the Sumerian and there's an Akkadian. Yes, version. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, um, I was great. I'd have been I'd have been down there stuffing uh, pound <laughs> notes right. in the front of his pants. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but uh, that's a but very yeah. that's a very kind of learned um. <laughs> A uh, higher echelon of scripture. That actually, that's yeah, not a bad think. idea. We should open the <laughs> the strip joint for a serologist where instead of like hot women, you get like overweight, pasty faced <laughs> men like swinging on poles. <laughs> With their, yeah, yeah, their it's be, I tell over, you uh, discoveries of a single half line of some uh, right. They're just losing their shit. Um, I'd go there. I would too. It would be very tweedy. Get a um, lap dance. So, um, so then, yeah. So, I mean, the, the nice thing is, Irv kind of has his own experience, right? Of then, uh, and what was, and it's not on the buses, but it's some kind of like, so like the guy who brings him this tablet oh, yes. turns out to be, turns out to be a a, a child star from some old yeah, English. This is, um, this is Douglas Simmons. Okay, yeah, I don't know much about Doug. Um, uh, why well, he was in he was the fat kid in Here Come the Double Deckers, right? Okay. Um, Which I have never seen. I don't. I this is I'd never heard of this show before. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm vaguely familiar. It was ahead before our time, but uh, it was mm. on and repeats at a certain point when I was a kid. Incident, inter- uh, incidentally, uh, he was the fat kid in Here Come the Double Deckers. The mm-hmm. black kid in uh, Here Come the Double Deckers was a Brinsley Ford later of Azwad. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So it was a breeding oh. ground for all sorts of uh, yeah interesting folks. And Robin Asquith was once a guest star. So what more there we go. do you need? There we go. It all comes full circle Sign of now. quality. We wanted to squeeze Robin Asquith into <laughs> our <laughs> it's it's a, a, episode. Into, into, yeah, into the canon, for sure. And there we go. Again, Robin's, Robin Asquith as George Smith Confessions of an Assyriologist <laughs> speeded up his taking his clothes <laughs> off and shagging some intern or something over it. Mm, mm, okay, yes. It's got to happen. That's to, on our that's, that's on our slate of films we're going to make, right? Okay, yes, oh yeah, that. yeah. Assyriologist. I, I think so. I'm down. Um, so yeah, he uh, he gets this he gets this, but then it's kind of it's kind of funny because it, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tease, right? This guy shows up with this thing and shows it to him, and he's like, "Oh, I can't let you keep this, though." Um, <laughs> and then and then leaves, and it, it takes a long time to coax him to come back. Please bring me that tablet. I I'm slightly worried now, Nick. How much sexuality we're managing to find in <laughs> in <a> yeah, sociology? Yeah. <laughs> Is there something wrong with us? I yeah, think there might be. There might be. Um, Yes, and anyway, so then he he goes through the process of of decoding this uh, tablet and discovering. Mm. Um, in a way, it's funny that the book is quite long and quite dense, and it it, it does a good job of of because you know it it treats you as though maybe you don't know much about. Yeah. So it, it, it's we, kind we, of covers, we so, no exactly. Yeah. So it, it's it's not like he goes straight to his kind of like um, revelations, right? It's just a lot of building up towards them and supporting them in in various ways right but in a way the book is really built around this idea of like there was this mi- there, there's some missing parts some missing lines that fill in some gaps which make the connection between the biblical version of the flood and these older mesopotamia words even more tightly connected yeah i mean this right? I, I i enjoyed this book and actually i didn't find it a dense read really actually it's sound- Found it quite breezy. Okay, maybe that dense is the wrong word, but it's but it's it's long. It's longish, right? Yeah, yeah but it, somehow it's it's it didn't feel like a long read. Like, mm-hmm. I, like by the time I finished, oh, is that it? And one other, so this wasn't actually quite what I expected it to be. Okay. Um, so the reason I actually wanted this book and what I thought it was going to contain, which it doesn't that much actually, was so. You know, obviously there's this version and then there's the version of the Bible. But the thing is, there are actually quite a lot of foundational flood myths from around the world. And I thought what this book was actually going to be was uh, it was it was going to corral them all. Oh, like a comparative. Yeah. And and also a case for how they might have been transmitted from from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. And it's not other than they kind of explain how the transition to Aramaic would have happened and 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 Judeans in Mesopotamia. Right, yeah. And yeah, yes, yeah. And it goes into that kind of lim- we were talking earlier about how later from a different lens we'll see it into those liminal spaces where it's not you know, it's not that you know, it's not it's not like like in the same way as it's not the 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 Greek or Roman era, but but mm. Greece and Rome are still there. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I thought there was going to be more of that. I thought there was going to be a lot more hardcore stuff about how all the myths interconnect and 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 how they might have been transmitted. But actually, there's very little of that, and it's actually more how to build your own art. Right for the lack of <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes absolutely which is kind of interesting uh, it's it's, it's mm-hmm. kind of a fun it's a fun and quite lighter than I expected read in a way but in a in a mm-hmm. good way you know sometimes when you make you know hard, hard things simple it's 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 you go too much you know it's a bit too lightweight whereas mm-hmm. Irving Finkel has quite a good he's got a, a light touch but, mm-hmm. but without um, sacrificing the important stuff. 
Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I didn't expect it to turn into that. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah it's really quite, yeah, really, it really gets into the, into the uh, granular on how to yeah, build. Yeah, 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 like uh, I, I a, didn't a think I basket. would, yeah, I didn't think I would That's be floating. learning about how to build coracles, right? Yes, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which Thank you, I was second, struggling to, to find the word there. a lot of coracle um, engineering <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> explained, right? Which is mm -hmm. good. I mean, I like being pleasantly surprised. I didn't expect to be reading that, and it's fine. However, I have to admit, I am still on the lookout now, then, for that book yes. that I thought this would be. Yes. And, and I think the struggle there is is because you, you want to keep away from... Well, you I mean you know that that Eric von Daniken, you know, the woolly side of that stuff, right? You know, which I, right. I I fear a lot of the books that might do that might get into the weeds on, you know, that yeah, just the 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 bullshit, you know, that there, like you know, um, yeah. like there was like that there definitely was a flood and it affected the entire world and that's why all of these different cultures. Whereas in fact, this makes a pretty good case for chances are the blood that inspired this story may have been a very localized event as opposed to a, a worldwide you know yes well it's, a, it's an interesting one because the other thing they try and do as well is they try and make a case for well how likely is it that the story is true mm -hmm. they make kind of interesting points along the lines of you know the the whole all the animals went in two by two and stuff, which sounds ridiculous. But then they make mm -hmm. a point of, well, how many animals would have been recognized in those days? So that that cuts right. the number down by quite a lot, mm -hmm. right? When they they're not anywhere near being fully aware of how many different species, you know, for them right. it might have just been, uh, you know, uh, um, a daddy oh, long legs and a tarantula were both just spider, right? Yes, yeah. So they just would have had two spiders on there. Mm -hmm. Um, which is kind of a, but but again, I don't think they go full. I, I, I don't I don't think Irving Finkel's trying to push the narrative no, no, that no. this definitely happened. No, uh, but it's agreed. interesting reading between the lines. Um, it's kind of well, yeah, maybe some dude during a flood, uh, one probably one of many floods, um was smart enough to know, hang on, there's usually a flood this time of year, mm -hmm. built the coracle, uh, put his family put his on it. Livestock in there. Yeah, they floated about a bit. And then and then obviously it became embellished and became mm -hmm. this huge myth, right? And um so right. so it's interesting from from that uh it's I it's interesting because him trying to replicate it in a way is is it brings it back down to earth, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, apparently these coracles, which do just look like big wicker baskets almost, right? Yeah, um, I, I, are, I, I wanted, you, you, saying you, wanted to, you wanted to write your name in cuneiform. I was tempted to go out and build a coracle, uh, mm -hmm. be a good summer project during rainy season. I think you could start going around telling people that. Yeah, yeah, and then show you know, off my coracle. Um, I do, I do love that in the Mesopotamian version of this, right? Um, you know, the the the, uh, the 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 Hebrew and then the Christian Bible have this, you know, version where um, you know man is sinful and God decides to like deal with this and start again from scratch. Yeah. Um, but but in in the Mesopotamia, it's just that they're, they're like noisy downstairs neighbors, and that the gods are like, like, fuck, it, keep it down, you yeah, noisy well, tricks. He like, and then finally just the decide to, to kill everyone. Tower of Babel story, right? Or Tower of Babel, right? It's it's mm -hmm. a very similar, um, kind of, yeah. The gods, the gods must be cunts, right? Just uh, right. Yeah, but but, it, but again, in in the, in the Tower of Babel, at least in the biblical version, it's kind of like it, it's they're punished right for um for their hubris yeah speaking ex hubris, he right? would be wiped <laughs> out in a second mm -hmm. yeah um you know because they're and you know and so and he makes a good case for the fact that the light like it is it is that big ziggurat that the you know hebrews would have seen when they came in uh into babylon right they would have seen this and that they kind of built a myth around what this could have even been right this kind of right um 
but but yeah but i just it, it just seems so much more petty and awesome that it's just like oh man they just they just won't shut up they won't keep it down we've got right. to kill them all and then one of the other gods takes pity right and um and tells well i can't remember the name because there's multiple names for for the character right because the name in the gilgamesh is different than the name in this version right because there's right. the um yeah we various call him things. steve steve <laughs> yeah yeah steve is the guy that the gods that yeah. the gods told um but uh but yes, and then you know, I guess one of his big revelations in this book is that there is a specific line that says two by two. And before this, no, you know, there was no, it wasn't known that apparently even that part of the idea of taking two of each animal, a male and a female, right. does go back to this earlier version. Um, it's pre-biblical. Hmm. But yeah, I definitely, let, let's do it. Let's build one. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's. I wouldn't mind building a coracle. It seems like a nice hmm. summer project if you would Spending all time and watching Umberto Lenzi films, for example. Um, this is true. This watch is true. This space. Um, hmm. But no, I mean, again, this is it, this. I I think this is a good like. Um, even if you're not um, attempting to do a YouTube series about the entire Everything. civilization of man, um, I think this is a good. Um, just a fun little read mm -hmm. that almost anyone could pick up. And as a consequence, you learn a little bit about cuneiform, you learn a little bit about your seriology, you learn a little bit about coracles, you learn a little bit about, you know, the flood myth. And, you know, mm -hmm. so it's a good, it's a good little um, uh, starting point. Mm -hmm. A primer. primer. Yeah, no, not primer. Um <laughs> Um, I, I was going to say, actually, I, where I read this, which was kind of kind of wonderful uh, for me, because uh, I'm a well-traveled, uh, you know, and windswept and interesting fellow. Um, I was on a train uh, from Palermo. It, yes, <laughs> I was on a train from Palermo to Agrigento to wander around in the uh, massive uh, series of very well-preserved Greek temples that exist in this Sicilian kind of uh, mountain town. Mm. And this was a great thing to read on a two-hour train ride to then go and hang around in things that look right out of Ray Harryhausen films. Like, you could easily see a big stop-motion, um, you know, play, whatever, right. coming around the corner. I, I but, read uh, it on the train. Or well, there we go. In the bath. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I might have read some of it in the bath, too. But, um, but yeah, anyway. I had lots of fun with this. Agreed. I think I thought it was a it was a it was a entertaining read, and I yeah, know much yeah. more about building a coracle. Yes, than I yes. Did which was, it wasn't exactly what I was after because this isn't a coracle as spec, but uh, no, not yet. But uh, but there's another potential uh, <laughs> option. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I mean, Code of Hammurabi. I mean, again, yes, one day when um. I can take out a you know a second mortgage to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I won't mind reading more about that in detail. Uh, this is a, a great. Yep. I I think this is like I mean these type of books like this are worth because of the whole university press issue. When when you do stumble across something which is um, kind of definitive mm -hmm. yet affordable and accessible, mm -hmm. I think it's worth. Um, Celebrate it. Yeah. Like, I agree. Good bookers. And then, yeah, this is kind of, it, oddly enough, this is kind of like um, fun summer reading in a way. I, I was going to say, it felt like out, I, I read it on a summer holiday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever, you know, uh, and it felt like a summer holiday read, which you wouldn't expect about a book about, you know, no. a, a serologist. No. But uh, actually, in the, in that way, the cover of what looks like some people climbing up the side of a large coconut. Actually, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that it is this oddly enough. Yeah, it is kind mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. Uh, right. That's probably enough hubris. I think for today. one for one episode. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be back. I think we'll still be here in Mesopotamia, maybe. For one I'm never getting but... past those two fucking rivers. They've got oh, the corral. We need to build a coracle. Oh, that's how we get out. 
apparently actually i'll just uh, i'll bring us back just to to hammurabi for one, one more moment apparently he devised a really effective and shitty form of warfare at this time of damming rivers and then releasing the water and and using basically flood as a weapon um, right. which is so again having a coracle ready to go just in case hammurabi comes up uh, and floods your town is probably also you know yeah. get your coracles course. together lads Many, many, many centuries later, um, having a chart hit with You Can't Touch This as MC Hammurabi. Hammurabi, yes, yes. Yeah, well, you know, those pants had to have come from Babylon. There's no question. See you for more erudite, informed, intelligent chat next time. Bye.